Welcome to The Read Along, a mini book club for your ears, a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. I'm your host, Scott. I'm your other host, Anita. And join us on a journey through a good book, one one chapter chapter at a time. time. This episode of The Read Along is brought to you by Park Power, your friendly local utilities provider in Alberta, offering internet, electricity, and natural gas with low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. Winter is coming and energy usage for all Albertans will increase, so now's a good time for you to look at your utility bill and ensure you're on the best plan. Albertans have a choice of who they pay their utility bills to. Park Power is happy to provide free, no obligations comparisons. If you decide to switch providers, it's easy. And you can feel good knowing you're supporting a local business and helping give back to your community with your utility bill. Learn more right now at parkpower.ca. Had an unusually warm fall so far. Up until today, yes. Yeah, it's finally started to cool down a bit. Still just like regular fall temperatures. It's not unusually cold for this time of year. It's just normally cold for this time of year. Yeah, it is appropriately cool for the weather as opposed to last week when I had to turn on the air conditioner again after we had assumed that we weren't going to anymore. Yeah. It got hot for a little while. Yeah, normally it's a little cool around my birthday, but uh, not this year. Also, Scott has now not so subtly dropped that it was his birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Birthdays happen. Birthdays happen. Scott had one earlier this week. Yeah. It was uh, nice. Was able to have a few people over. Uh, the last couple of years being what they have been, we missed a couple milestone birthdays, each of us, actually. It's true. And uh, didn't get to have the kind of blowouts that we might have liked. So it was nice to even just have a couple people over to have visit. adult conversation with and visit with. Yeah. yeah. We grilled some steak. Some of us, not all of us, <laughs> drank some scotch. We played some silly games and had fun conversations with our friends. It was a nice night. It was delightful. Yeah. Our kids so. ran around and played. It was cool. That has nothing to do whatsoever with the book. Not so. even a little bit. No. It's just a little bit of update on us. <laughs> well, I mean, we usually have a little bit of preamble. Well, it's nice to know that we're human, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, enough of that. <laughs> Enough finding out that we're human and back into the book stuff. So a brief recap of our previous chapter in which Dr. Addie Cox, who I may have accidentally called Abby a few times last episode. Oh, no, it's Addie with D's. But it is Addie with D's. Meets with Harris Lang, an eccentric billionaire, and a uh, mercenary named Torres, and is offered a job to go to a mysterious fantasy Jurassic Park. (laughs) <laughs> which has been taken over by possibly her ex-boyfriend. And on the one hand, she's very not interested in going on this mission. And on the other hand, she is very interested in going on this mission. <laughs> right. And that leads us into chapter three of Questland by Carrie Vaughn. So chapter three, where the shadows lie. Yeah, this book is clipping along uh, because we go from introducing our protagonist to getting a job offer to on the way to the job. Right. So we cut to a boat, (laughs) middle of the night, and of course, violent, stormy, nausea inducing seas. Yeah. Because of course we do. Well, you got to set the scene. (laughs) There's danger lurking. Yes. Yeah. Addie is feeling very out of place, not just because she's on a boat in like swishy seas with a group of mercenaries, but also because she's with a group of mercenaries. Right? She's a literature professor. Yeah. She is out of her element. Indeed. Now we're introduced to a couple things here. First of all, Addie did have a little bit of time. This is not like an hour later she's on a boat on the way to the No, no, no. It wasn't that fast. Just our story has moved on. Yeah, there was some prep. And one of the things that Addie kind of insisted on doing was a little bit of like desensitization training. This surprised me. Like, good for her yeah. to plunge into desensitization. Yeah. Did I say that right? Uh, that quickly? Because of her lingering trauma involving firearms and knowing that there could be firearms usage on this mission she's agreed to go on, she kind of insists on going with the mercenaries to a shooting range. Yes. Just to kind of get used to the the sound and the smell and, and the yeah. experience so that if shooting does need to happen, she's less likely to maybe freeze up or panic. Right. So kudos to her. Yeah, that's that is incredibly super brave. Brave of her. And I mean, kudos to the mercenaries too. Like, 
so far they've been surprisingly likable. <laughs> like even Rucker, who is the one who has verbally within earshot been like, she's going to be a load. We should like not go with her. <laughs> they've all been pretty cool. And Torres even is like, do you want to shoot a few rounds? And she's like, nah, no, I'm no, not no. comfortable with that. And he's like, legit, that's fine. Like, nope, that's fine. And I'm not going to, and I'm not going to force you to carry a firearm because that way leads to disaster. Oh like, yeah. No, you don't hand <laughs> an untrained person a gun. No. Especially one who is... Afraid of guns. Exactly. Yeah. Or possibly prone to, like, meltdowns, hysteria. No, that is a terrible idea. He is doing the right thing. No, he's he's very professional and very understanding. And is is being quite tolerant of the fact that they have to take her with them. He knows better than anyone else on this mission, though, what is going on. Yeah, probably. And what to do. Yeah. Right? He's the one with the most information. We do get introduced to the rest of his uh, squad, though. He and his four-person team, him being the fourth person, (laughs) who are doing this, like, covert infiltration onto the island. So, first off is his number two, Almonte. Yes. She is someone who apparently did serve with him in the Navy SEALs. The two of them have a lot of rapport. To draw a Firefly comparison, she is the Zoe to his Mal. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. They have long history together. They have, like, a shorthand. They understand each other implicitly. I like her. Either. I liked her right away. Yeah, she is. She's also a medical expert and seems very polite to Addie the whole time. But Addie is self conscious enough to believe that that might just be her being polite. <laughs> Next up, we've got Wendell, who's their tech expert. Yeah, I looked him up. He has an electrical engineering degree. So he's all about, he's the hacker. Yes. Right? And I mean, they're going into a situation where they're going to be dealing with high tech. Yep. Ex- highly experimental high tech. Yep. That is being used to replicate magic. So, I mean, you want a tech expert. Yeah, exactly. Like, his first job on this mission is to break them through a force field, right? Yes. Like, he is... Which he does. Uh, which he does. He's absolutely their their tech nerd. Yeah, he's being particularly quiet. Addie feels that he's being cold to her and not really paying attention to her because she's not his focus, and she's probably not wrong. Again, he's the tech expert going onto a high-tech island where they're going to be dealing with unexpected technology. He's probably laser focused on that job. And I genuinely hope at some point in this book, he witnesses some sort of magical computery something something and just goes, wow. We'll have to wait and see. I hope so. And I already mentioned Rucker. He's the last member of the team. He's kind of like the brawn. He's the muscle. Yeah. And he's the one who's most verbally like, "Mm, she's a liability. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean... He's not wrong. She admits he's not wrong, but it's still kind of rude to say. <laughs> yeah. And he and Taurus kind of puts him in his place. Like, well, she's coming, so deal with it. Yeah. I believe Taurus's exact words were, uh, it's your job to follow orders. And he's not wrong. <laughs> so stop asking questions and get back to work. Now, Addie, being a huge nerd, immediately puts them into the context of their D&D party. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, she does this. But there's a line right before she goes into this where she pulls out her lucky D20 from her pocket Mm -hmm. as like a comfort item while she's, you know, sitting in a firing range trying not to freak out. And my first thought was, of course she has a lucky D20. Yeah. Of course she does. Here we go. She breaks them down to Torres is the party leader and he's the ranger. He's their Aragorn. (laughs) We've got Almonte, who is the cleric. Yep. She's there for moral support and for healing. Yeah, so she's, uh, Final Fantasy-wise, she's the white mage. Wendell is their artificer, so <laughs> he's the guy who knows the gadgets and the and the gizmos and stuff. Kind of like a rogue, not quite. Uh, honestly, I might have placed him as a wizard myself. Mm, he hasn't done any wizard stuff yet. He breaks them through a force field. Fair enough. And Rucker is the barbarian. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> He's the heavy. And then that leaves her puzzling about what role in the party she fills, and she settles on, well, I guess I'm the bard. <laughs> I, well, here's the thing. It's actually a great bard joke. I thought it was very clever and very funny, uh, as it was written in the book. But it makes sense, because they are bringing her along to talk to somebody. Well, not just to like talk her, to somebody. Her job is to possibly, potentially, talk down her ex-boyfriend. Yes, and, and bards tend to be the charismatic ones. But further to that, bards are also full of just useless trivia and knowledge. Yes! And Addie is a professor of pop culture. Yes! With a specialization, obviously, in fantasy. So she's not the bard by process of elimination. She's the bard because she's, she's the, the bard. bard. <laughs> she's a little sad about that fact. Poor <laughs> ah, bards. No, bards are cool. Bards can be great. I don't play bards, but bards can be cool. <laughs> they land on the island after having 
punched a little hole through the force field. They take a moment to hide the boat. Standard infiltration stuff. Yeah, you don't want do... anybody to notice that a boat's on the island because then people will know someone's on the island. They go, they go like full on Navy SEAL and they're like, okay, no evidence. And then they all get to work and they rush around. And meanwhile, Addie's trying not to throw up and learn to stand again. Yeah. And she does kind of <laughs> want to take a break, but everybody else is ready to go. And she's like, I guess we're going. Okay. You've been seasick before. Yeah. Have you not? Right. So when you finally get onto dry land and or things calm down and you have something solid to hold on to, it takes you a minute, right? So poor Addie, I, I felt for her. But they do have a job to do. Yes, and they, I know. And they do need to get it done fast, <laughs> ideally. So yeah, they, they want to get a move on. And uh, that's more or less where the action ends. But there is a little more texture in this chapter. Yes, because nice. Because we get a little bit more about the shooting that Addie is traumatized by. And apparently two of her best friends were killed. Well, her best friend and her boyfriend. Who Arguably one of her best friends. Yes, I know, but you know what I'm saying. Her then boyfriend, because obviously she has since had another boyfriend in Dominic Brand. Yes. So while she's sitting in the shooting range, trying to deal with what's going on around her, she kind of like turns inward, right? And try to tries to find that happy, comfortable place. Mm -hmm. And she lands on Alex and Dora, her boyfriend and her best friend. And while she's finding comfort in their memories, because they were the ones shot right next to her, yeah, having to relive a trauma is horrible. And the fact that she has found some comfort in it, I think is good. She even thinks to herself at one point that if Dora were still alive and she had been like, I'm going on this secret mission to this fantasy, high-tech fantasy island, Dora would be like, this is the coolest thing in the world. You can tell me all about this. Take pictures. <laughs> And that also kind of brings a smile to her face. Yeah. Like it's it's a fond thought. Yeah. It's it's nice to know that there's comfort in their memory as opposed to uh, pain. Yeah. It's well it's well, it's a mixed pain. memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's comfort there, there's pain there. It's it's a it's a stinging loss still to this day. Of course. We also get to learn through this actually very beautiful exposition, I think, a little bit more about Addie and what kind of nerd she is. A big one. A Big one. So she talks about them like doing cosplay together and going to cons together and gaming together. And by the time she was done talking about all of that, I'm like, oh, oh, she's my kind of nerd. Yeah. Oh, and in my head, I, quite honestly, I was going, oh, one of us, one of us. So what we have already established now, three chapters in, is that this is a nerd book for nerds, and I am here for it. I mean, it was it was pretty plain on the blurb on the back that it was a nerd book for nerds oh but this is this isn't just a book for nerds this is a nerd book for nerds written by a nerd who understands nerds i'm into it there you go i am here for it i am so excited for the rest of this book that having been said i mean we've pretty much digested this chapter uh the book has been clipping by so far yeah the pace I... is fast yes that's true the chapters are brisk without necessarily feeling truncated I don't mean to say that they feel short, but they have they clip by. Yeah. Well, remember uh, last chapter I said I felt really rushed? Yeah. That that last chapter felt like pushy almost mm -hmm. in its rush? I didn't feel that in this chapter. Interesting. It clipped along nicely. It was explained beautifully. I didn't feel rushed or hurried or like anything was missing. So like it seems to be alternating chapters so far because the first chapter, doing fine. Second chapter, I'm like, oh, I'm being rushed. Tell me more things. Third chapter, she told me lots of things, and we still clipped along, and I was okay with it. Like, this one felt good. Yeah, and I, I suspect the pace might slow down a bit as we get into the next couple chapters, as they start to explore the island. Because my feeling is that the first couple chapters were just kind of quickly getting us to the island, because Carrie Vaughn wants us to be on the island where stuff is going to happen. Yeah. So, like, the stuff that happened before is just the setup. Now we're on the island. Let's go, is kind of my my feeling. But yeah. I, I could be wrong. The next chapter could also be very brisk. I don't know. Oh, we'll see. It'll be good. Yeah. Um, We kind of brushed over this quickly earlier uh, when she was talking about Wendell and how he sort of looked past her like she was a piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. I kind of think that's something that Addie is also putting on herself. Yeah. Because she feels so out of place. Right? Like, this is not her element. No. This is not where she should be. This is not really where she wants to be. So her feeling out of place and then being treated not like a person, but like an, a piece of equipment didn't really help. Yeah. And well, I even mentioned before, like, 
I think Wendell is being brusque with her simply because like she correctly identifies she's not his concern because he's the tech expert going into a mission with highly experimental technology. Yeah. And he's kind of laser focused on that. So Which he doesn't fine. have time to worry about her. No. And my feeling was you kind of almost want that with your tech expert going into an island full of highly experimental tech. I'd rather him be laser focused on that and not so worried about being a people person at the moment. That's fine. You can still treat someone like a person, right? Same thing with Rucker. He doesn't want her there. So but, he's not being particularly nice to her, even though it's part of his job to keep her alive. Well, and he will. It's not like he's going to dump her at the first opportunity. He's, my feeling is Rucker is going to follow orders. He's just putting words to something that Addie is feeling herself, that she's the load and that she's potentially a liability. But she's there and they're going to have to protect her. So they're going to. Yeah. Besides, if this is a classic fantasy adventure, the fish out of water always ends up building camaraderie with the rest of the party. Bilbo makes friends with the dwarves. The Fellowship yeah. of the Rings all become tight. That's like, true. It's, it happens. Okay, fair enough. So I'm not necessarily saying that's guaranteed the trajectory we're going on. No, but you're right. It happens a lot. But if this is a classic fantasy adventure, <laughs> and, <laughs> and this is our adventuring party. We are kind of pointed in that direction. <laughs> then they're going to start with some friction, but they're going to gel before the end, right? So That's true. Okay, yeah. that's true. Yeah, I just, this whole chapter, I was really, I was really feeling for Addie, for all of the stuff she put herself through to go through what she needs to go through, right? I felt for her, out of place, not in her best, <laughs> having to do stuff anyway. I feel you, Addie Cox. We'll, uh, we'll see if the situation changes for the better or the worse as we move into chapter four, Dump Stat. <laughs> Is someone going to have no charisma? And that will be something you're going to want to read up on in time for next week. In the meantime, you know, mercenaries are private contractors. So obviously they have to handle a lot of their own personal business. And that would include probably benefits. And if you are a small business leader, a small team leader like Torres, and you want to provide your people with benefits, you might have to reach out to an organization like Alberta Blue Cross, who can help you out with that. And Anita has something to tell you about it right now. This episode of The Read Along is brought to you by Alberta Blue Cross. Even if you're a busy business owner with more meetings than hours in a day, you are calm and collected when your group benefit plan is taken care of by Alberta Blue Cross. Your employees can manage their own health, dental, life, and disability coverage online, anytime, on any device, making it easier for them and for you. To learn more and explore your options, head to ab.bluecross.ca. Yeah, Alberta Blue Cross. Woo! If you haven't heard us talk about them before, you haven't been paying attention. Yeah, they've been uh, supporting our podcast quite a bit uh, for the last little bit. That's okay. We like their support. It's absolutely. It's very yeah. nice. Um, you can learn more about Alberta Blue Cross, the other sponsors of the network and the network itself right now at albertapodcastnetwork.com. Plenty of other great podcasts there. You can catch them on your podcatcher of choice. It's probably where you're catching our pod. Well, that just makes sense. You can give us a little rating and review that helps us out. Oh, we'd like that very much. You can reach out to us on social media. Yes, we are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Goodreads. So pick your poison. We are at The Read Along on most of those. You can also send us an email. Yes, we are The Read Along at gmail.com. And with that said, as always, we love you very much, and we'll see you next time. Adventure ho! Thank you for joining us on The Read Along with your hosts, Anita and Scott Bourgeois, a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network. All Read Along music is by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Cover art is by Aaron Beaver. Be sure to join us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Read Along, and check out our group on Goodreads.com. Goodreads.com.